Shalom. Today we're going to take another look at understanding Hebrew verb structure. There's quite a few lessons in this unit, but hopefully this one will help you out. We're going to be discussing a linguistic function which is called metathesis, and that is where either letters or syllables exchange places within the word. So an example that you have in English is the word three. And when we talk about the thing that comes after the second thing, we don't say the thrid thing. The I and the R change places, and we say the third thing, which is easier to pronounce. Now, let me ask you a question. When I first moved to the South, I heard people say this, and I thought it was a matter of metathesis, but also perhaps poor speech habits. What happens when people say ax instead of ask is that those two sounds, the S and the K, change places. And it's pretty common here in the South among different groups. However, I found out that it's actually quite old, going back to Chaucer's time. And here is a verse from the Coverdale Bible, which was translated in 1535. You can see it at the website on the screen. And he very clearly says, Ax, and it shall be given to you, instead of ask. So it's an old speech pattern and common. Now metathesis takes place in Hebrew, strictly in the Hitpa'el binyan. So if we go back to our old verb friend, Shamar, if we put it in the Hitpa'el, instead of having Lahit Shamar, which is what we would expect, the Tav and the Shin change places, and we get Lahishtamar, which is, in fact, easier to pronounce. Now, this process takes place for all the sibilant letters, all the S sound letters, which are made between your teeth. Shin, Sin, Samich, Zion, and Tzadi. So, in Psalm 18.24, we see Eshtamer, the concept is, I will guard myself from my sin. So it's imperfect. It's not et shamer, it's esh tamer. In Micah 6.16, 6, here is a third person masculine singular, imperfect, yish tamer. The shin comes before the top. And, the, and he guarded or kept the laws of Omri. Another verb root is shachar, and this has to do with strong drink. So we see in 1 Samuel 1.14, a second person feminine singular imperfect, tishtakari. You can ignore the nun on the end. And Eli is talking to Hannah, and he said, when are you going to stop being drunk? Because he sees her lips are moving, but no sound is coming out. And she is praying for the birth of her child. So here is with a sin, sachar, and you remember this root. It's the root for the name of Yisachar, and it has to do with earning wages. In Haggai 1.6, we see it in the participle form. Remember, your participles in your Hitpa'el binyan are going to begin with mem. So it's hamistaker, mistaker. The one who is earning wages, he is earning wages, what? to put them in a pocket with a hole in them. Another verb root you probably know with samich, sater, to be hidden or to hide. In 1 Samuel 26, 1, we see a participle form, mistater. Hello, David, mistater. Isn't David hiding himself? In Isaiah 29, 14, we see a third person feminine singular, talking about the bina, the understanding, is feminine, tistater, it is hiding. Shechach, you know, means to forget. And in Ecclesiastes 8.10, we see a third person, masculine plural, imperfect. Yish Now, when we have the form that begins with the tzadi, and this is much more common in modern Hebrew, but we have an example in biblical Hebrew. The tav actually changes to a tet. So the letters are reversed, and then instead of a tav, we'll have a tet. So here in this example from Genesis 44, 16, 
the brothers are talking to Joseph and they're saying, how can we show ourselves to be righteous? Nitztadak. You see the tzedek is there. Instead of the tav, you have the tet. The nun is for first person, plural, imperfect. We will be righteous. We can, we can justify ourselves. Now, I didn't find any examples of Zion in Tanakh. And I did, in fact, read the entire Zion entry for the Englishman's Hebrew concordance of the Old Testament, and I found nothing that was in Hitpa'el. But it does occur in modern Hebrew. And in modern Hebrew, the Tav changes to a Dalid. So we have this root, this root, Zman. Zman means time. Maybe you know that. There is a verb in P'el to be on time. But then we have this root in Hitpa'el. This is a noun form. His damnut means your opportunity. So instead of the Tav, Dalid. But you're not going to find that in Tanakh. The most confusing of all these verbs is the one with this root, shacha, which means to bow down or prostrate oneself in worship, sometimes in worship. So first we'll look at the infinitive form. Genesis 37.10, Joseph has told his father about his dreams, and he says, Will your mother and I and your brothers come lehishtachavot? In verbs that end in hey, in the infinitive, we expect to find an ot. We have ose laasot, roe lir ot. But for some reason, the vav here is pronounced, and we have the cholem after it. So we're going to see this vav frequently in the conjugation of this verb, which makes it so confusing. Here are some examples from the perfect tense. First Samuel fifteen thirty. Hishtachaviti. Since it ends in hey, we might expect viti, but we get veti. So this is a first person singular. It's a reversing vav. We translate I will bow down, but the form itself is in the in the perfect in the past tense. Here's a second person singular masculine in Deuteronomy four nineteen. Hishtachavita. We recognize the ending ta. You did something. Again, a reversing vowel. Here is a third person masculine singular in Ezekiel 46.2. Hishtachava. A second person masculine plural in Exodus 24.1. Hishtachavitem. And the third person masculine plural in Exodus 11.8. Hishtachavu. In the imperfect tense, Genesis 24, 48, we still have that vav hanging on. Eshtachaveh, first person singular. Genesis 22, 5, I moved over to the first person plural because of the coming confusion. We will bow down. Nishtachaveh, Abraham talking to his two young men as he and Isaac go up the hill. Second person, masculine singular. Still looks very similar. Exodus 20, verse 5. Tishtachaveh. And the plural, all y'all. Second person masculine. Joshua 23, 7. Tishtachavu. All y'all should not bow down and worship. And then for the third person masculine singular, we find two forms. One is in Genesis 18, when the visitors come to Abraham's tent. We find this form yishtachu, and in Second Samuel fifteen thirty two, we have the form yishtachave, which looks more normal. I don't know where the yishtachu, the prior one, comes from, but they're both third person masculine singular. And here is another anomaly, as it appears in Ruth two ten, talking about Ruth bowing down before Boaz, and it's ta. We expect that she will, but the ending tishtachu instead of tishtachave. We're working with a very limited number of examples here. The participle form, as we said, is going to begin with mem, the masculine singular, Second Kings 19.37, mishtachave, he is bowing down in the house of Nisroch, his god. And a plural form, which looks pretty normal, 
Genesis 37, 9, Mishtachavim. So most of the cases we have this vocal consonantal vav kind of replacing the hey at the end, the hey of the third root letter, although it's very unusual and nothing else seems to do that. And here's one imperative form from Psalm 45, 11. Vayitav hamelech yafech, and the king desires your beauty, feminine singular, kihu adonaiach, he is your Lord, feminine singular, vi lo, and as in a command form, you should worship him, and indeed you should. I hope this is somewhat helpful. I pulled out as many examples as I could find. I know it's confusing, but just stick with it. You'll get the hang of it. Till next time, to Simitai Nayim Ahashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption does draw nigh. Shalom.